Now it is without a doubt that in every age of man that we think we've discovered everything there is to discover and there's nothing new under the sun. So I love it when I come across something that defies our current understanding of physics. Now the guy who came up with this, or rather promoted it I should say, had an uphill struggle. Like all of these things, it's always an uphill struggle. But he came up with a wind turbine that defies our current understanding of the physics of wind. And in order to get hold of that, and of course build it, which is exactly what we're going to do in this video, there are three things that I want to show you. Now, the first two things are contained in the works of Simon Gruppenberg. He's a finished artist, and he has an installation of these artworks in Pietasari, Finland. And what I want us to pay particular attention to is the circular one that's clearly made out of LP records with some plastic glued on it. And there are two important things here. One is the actual disc itself, and the other one is what's beneath the rotating armature. Now this disc design was taken up by Robert Hunt. Robert is something of a controversial figure in that he also came up with the anti-gravity plane. But he's clearly taken that disc idea and cut it out of aluminium to make flapping discs that rotate on an aluminium disc. And he has patented this. So you can have a look at the patent if you want. And it is patent number wo 20040791861 a 2 where you'll see some pretty cool drawings. And what we're going to do is build that. Well, a version of that, more akin to Simon's work. And Simon said that he got his inspiration from the Nashtafan windmills in Persia. And they are the oldest windmills known to man. Now, if we have a look at the rotating disc from the bottle underneath, you'll see the bearing that Simon used. You can make a fluid thrust bearing all by yourself from simple materials you can find around. So I thought I'd go through that. What I've got here is a piece of pipe glued onto a piece of plastic, so it's basically a cup. And in that cup I can fit a bottle, an empty plastic bottle. On that plastic bottle I've put a rod, it's an 8mm diameter rod. When we drop that in there, then we have the basics of a thrust bearing, a fluid hydrostatic thrust bearing. All we have to do is fill that with water. Now, following Archimedes' principle on displacement, then this empty bottle will displace the fluid in there, displace the water. It will displace an equal mass of water. Now, of course, water has a, a um, one litre equals one kilogram, so we can look at it straight as being weight. This is a 500 millilitre bottle. If I were to fill this up, this would weigh 500 grams. Empty, what it means is if I tried to force it, force it into there, I need to displace that 500 millilitres, or I need to displace 500 grams. So this bottle will successfully carry half a kilo just by dropping it in a uh, piece of water. If I were to do that, I would have created an, a, a hydrostatic bearing, but of course it's going to wobble around like crazy because it's got nothing to support it here. So what I've got is a little hedge frame. This hedge frame has a couple of bearings in it in the centre there. Those bearings don't support the weight. They don't support anything. All they do is when it tries to wobble, they nudge it back into a centre position. So these aren't contributing very much at all. There's a big reduction of friction of here because now it's being put on by water. So to demonstrate that, we're going to stick something on. What I've got is this fan blade. So we're going to put the fan blade on there and make our hydrostatic bearing. So I shoved my bottle through that flan, uh, through a fan and through this hedge support. And if I drop my bottle in there, we're pretty much ready to go. Now let's put some water in our pipe. As we put water in the pipe, we'll see that rise up a bit. It'll rise up a bit because the um, empty bottle is trying to displace that water and it will displace the water to the mass of this and this put together. There she goes. <laughs> we have reduced the friction on that incredibly. So even the slightest push with it We'll send that round. Put a hairdryer on it on low. Hmm. 
<laughs> now, of course, you don't have to make a water thrust bearing. I liked it because it could be made from just stuff lying around. But equally as good would be two magnets from a speaker set that were facing the same direction. They would create that upward lift for this as well. Anyway, now let's make the main body. To make this, I've got my LP and I've got a bit of Tyvek. This is house wrap, although I imagine any bit of stiff cloth will do this, or even sheet plastic. Easiest thing to do, lay my disc on there, trimming knife blade, and then just go around it and cut out the circle. I got my circle, and then I drew two lines on it, 90 degrees apart, a bit of super glue on the reverse, and super glued it down. Then I took the trimming knife and cut a slice there, so it made this wing shape. Now let's shove that onto our axle. Hi. <laughs> There it is together. Ten minutes work. Let's turn the hairdryer on it and see what happens. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That works really well! <laughs> so we created a quick example by hand, because anybody with a 3D printer could do a better job of this and include the slots which we didn't put in. If you want to do it with slots, of course, you're going to have to cut the slots in and repeat those flaps on the bottom side, and it's important, because those bottom flaps and slots create a drag and according to Dr Hunt this is where the misunderstanding or the lack of understanding occurs. The effect here has got nothing to do with the Bernoulli principle, it's got to do with the effect of drag which according to Dr Hunt creates a suction effect pulling the molecules out of the way and increasing the drag force and he says that he got this idea from watching Oyster fishermen. They would use the sails in a standard configuration, a lift configuration, to sail out and then realign them into a drag configuration to pull up the oysters because you needed a lot more force, a lot more torque to clear the oysters from the bed than you did to push the boat out there in the first place. Now he says that this is the result of a misunderstood or a poorly understood principle and he's used this principle in several things including his wind turbine and I believe a thruster and a, a kind of pump that is created that is supposed to be more energy efficient based on this new understanding of the effect of drag and wind flow as opposed to the old understanding where it's more or less governed by a Bernoulli principle. Anyway, I thought I would go through that. It's certainly interesting stuff. It's easy enough to make if you want to have a go. It's easy to make from everyday materials and you could extend this into a much better made device like Rob, uh, Dr. Hunt did with his aluminium one but using 3D printing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.